The Philippines Campaign, also known as the Battle of the Philippines or the Fall of the Philippines, was from December 8, 1941, to May 8, 1942, the invasion of the Philippines by the Empire of Japan and the defense of the islands by United States and the Philippine armies during World War II. The Japanese launched the invasion by sea from Formosa, over 200 miles north of the Philippines. The defending forces outnumbered the Japanese 3 to 2 but were a mixed force of non-combat experienced regular, National Guard, constabulary and newly created Commonwealth units. The Japanese used first-line troops at the outset of the campaign, and by concentrating their forces, they swiftly overran most of Luzon during the first month. The Japanese High Command, believing that they had won the campaign, made a strategic decision to advance by a month their timetable of operations in Borneo and Indonesia and to withdraw their best division and the bulk of their air power in early January 1942. That, coupled with the defenders' decision to withdraw into a defensive holding position in the Bataan Peninsula and also the defeat of three Japanese battalions at the Battle of the Points and Battle of the Pockets, enabled the Americans and Filipinos to hold out for four more months. After the Japanese failure to penetrate the Bataan defensive perimeter in February the Japanese conducted a 40-day siege. The crucial large natural harbor and port facilities of Manila Bay were denied to the Japanese until May 1942. While the Dutch East Indies operations were unaffected this heavily hindered the Japanese offensive operations in New Guinea and the Solomon Islands, buying time for the U.S. Navy to make plans to engage the Japanese at Guadalcanal instead of much further east. Japan's conquest of the Philippines is often considered the worst military defeat in U.S. history. About 23,000 American military personnel, and about 100,000 Filipino soldiers were killed or captured. Chapter 1, Background Chapter 1, Section 1, Japanese Activity Chapter 1, Section 1, Subsection 2, Objectives The Japanese planned to occupy the Philippines as part of their plan for a Greater East Asia War in which their Southern Expeditionary Army Group seized sources of raw materials in Malaya and the Netherlands East Indies while the combined fleet neutralized the United States Pacific Fleet. Five years earlier, in 1936, Captain Izikawa Shingo, a Japanese hard naval liner toured the Philippines and other parts of the Southeast Asian region as a part of their own world tour, saw that these countries had the raw materials that Japan was looking for, most especially to their armed forces. This helped further increase their aspiration for colonizing the Philippines. The Southern Expeditionary Army was created on 6 November 1941, commanded by General Hisaichi Terauchi, who had previously been Minister of War. It was ordered to prepare for war in the event that negotiations with the United States did not succeed in peacefully meeting Japanese objectives. They also included the condition of America's acceptance of their position in the Pacific as a superior force, with the testament of their occupation of China, but they did not get what they want. Under Terauchi's command were four core equivalent armies, comprising ten divisions and three combined arms brigades, including the Japanese 14th Area Army. Operations against the Philippines and Malaya were to be conducted simultaneously when Imperial General Headquarters ordered. The invasion of the Philippines had four objectives. To prevent the use of the Philippines as an advance base of operations by American forces to acquire staging areas and supply bases to enhance operations against the Dutch East Indies and Guam. To secure the lines of communication between occupied areas in the South and the Japanese home islands. To limit the Allied intervention when they attempt to launch an offensive campaign in Australia and the Solomon Islands via dispatching all the forces stationed in the country and other neighboring nations. Chapter 1 Section 1 Subsection 3 Invasion Forces Terauchi assigned the Philippines invasion to the 14th Army, under the command of Lieutenant General Masaharu Homa, 14, 20 air support of ground operations was provided by the 5th Air Group, under Lieutenant General Hideyoshi Obata, 21 which was transferred to Formosa from Manchuria. The amphibious invasion was conducted by the Philippines force under Vice Admiral Ibo Takahashi, 
using the Imperial Japanese Navy 3rd Fleet, 21 supported by the land-based aircraft of 11th Air Fleet of Vice Admiral Nishizo Sukahara. The 14th Army had two first-line infantry divisions, the 16th and 48th Divisions, to invade and conquer Luzon, and the 65th Brigade as a garrison force, 21 the Formosa-based 48th Division, though without combat experience, was considered one of the Japanese Army's best units, was specially trained in amphibious operations, and was given the assignment of the main landing in Lingayen Gulf. The 16th Division, assigned to land at Lumon Bay, was picked as one of the best divisions still available in Japan itself and staged from the Yukus and Palau. The 14th Army also had the 4th and 7th Tank Regiments, 24 5 Field Artillery Battalions, 5 Anti-Aircraft Artillery Battalions, 4 Anti-Tank Companies, and a Mortar Battalion. An unusually strong group of combat engineer and bridging units was included in the 14th Army's support forces. For the invasion, the 3rd Fleet was augmented by two destroyer squadrons and a cruiser division of the 2nd Fleet, and the aircraft carrier Ryujo from the 1st Air Fleet. The Philippines force consisted of an aircraft carrier, five heavy cruisers, five light cruisers, 29 destroyers, two seaplane tenders, minesweepers and torpedo boats, 22 combined army and navy air strength allocated to support the landings was 541 aircraft. The 11th Kokokantai consisted of the 21st and 23rd Kokosantai, a combined strength of 156 G4M Betty and Gemnel bombers, 107A6M0 fighters, plus seaplanes and reconnaissance planes, 24 most of these were based at Takao, and approximately a third were sent to Indochina in the last week of November to support operations in Malaya. The Ryujo provided an additional 16 fighters and 18 torpedo planes, and the surface ships had 68 seaplanes for search and observation, totaling 412 naval aircraft. The Army's 5th Kikoshidan consisted of two fighter regiments, two light bomber regiments, and a heavy bomber regiment, totaling 192 aircraft, 76 Ki-21 Sally, Ki-48 Lily, and Ki-30 and bombers, 36 Ki-27 Nate fighters, and 19 Ki-15 Babs and Ki-36 Ida observation planes, 24. Chapter 1 Section 2 Defenses Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 2 Yusuf From mid-1941, following increased tension between Japan and several other powers, including the United States, Britain and the Netherlands, many countries in Southeast Asia, and the Pacific began to prepare for the possibility of war. By December 1941, the combined defense forces in the Philippines were organized into the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, which eventually included the Philippine Army's 1st Regular Division, 2nd Division, and 10 mobilized reserve divisions, and the United States Army's Philippine Department. General Douglas MacArthur was recalled from retirement by the U.S. War Department and named Commander of Yusuf on July 26, 1941. MacArthur had retired in 1937 after two years as military advisor to the Philippine Commonwealth, and accepted control of the Philippine Army, tasked by the Filipino government with reforming an army made up primarily of reservists lacking equipment, training and organization. On July 31, 1941, the Philippine Department had 22,532 troops assigned, approximately half of them Filipino. MacArthur recommended the reassignment of Department Commander Major General George Grunert in October 1941 and took command himself. The main component of the department was the U.S. Army Philippine Division, a 10,500-man formation that consisted mostly of Philippine Scouts combat units. The Philippine Department had been reinforced between August and November 1941 by 8,500 troops of the U.S. Army Air Forces, and by three Army National Guard units, including its only armor, two battalions of M3 light tanks. These units, the 200th Coast Artillery Regiment, 192nd Tank Battalion, and 194th Tank Battalion, drew troops from New Mexico, Wisconsin, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, Minnesota, Missouri, and California. After reinforcement, 
The department's strength as of November 30, 1941 was 31,095, including 11,988 Philippine scouts. MacArthur organized Yusuf into four tactical commands. The North Luzon Force, activated December 3, 1941 under Major General Jonathan M. Wainwright, defended the most likely sites for amphibious attacks and the central plains of Luzon. Wainwright's forces included the PA 11th, 21st and 31st Infantry Divisions, the U.S. 26th Cavalry Regiment, a battalion of the 45th Infantry, and the 1st Provisional Artillery Group of two batteries of 155mm guns and one 2.95-inch mountain gun. The Philippine 71st Infantry Division served as a reserve and could be committed only on the authority of MacArthur. The South Luzon Force, activated December 13, 1941 under Brigadier General George M. Parker, Jr., controlled a zone east and south of Manila. Parker had the PA 41st and 51st Infantry Divisions and the 2nd Provisional Artillery Group of two batteries of the U.S. 86th Field Artillery Regiment. The Visayan Mindanao Force under Brigadier General William F. Sharp comprised the PA 61st, 81st, and 101st Infantry Divisions, reinforced after the start of the war by the newly inducted 73rd and 93rd Infantry Regiments. The 61st Division was located on Panay, the 81st on Cebu and Negros, and the 101st on Mindanao. In January a 4th Division, the 102nd, was created on Mindanao from the field artillery regiments of the 61st and 81st Divisions acting as infantry, and the 103rd Infantry of the 101st Division. The 2nd Infantry of the Philippine Army's 1st Regular Division and the 2nd Battalion of the U.S. 43rd Infantry were also made a part of the Mindanao Force. Yusuf's Reserve Force, under MacArthur's direct control, was composed of the Philippine Division, the 91st Division, and headquarters units from the PA and Philippine Department, positioned just north of Manila. The 192nd and 194th Tank Battalions formed the separate Provisional Tank Group, also under MacArthur's direct command, at Clarkfield-Fort Stotzenberg, where they were positioned as a mobile defense against any attempt by airborne units to seize the field. Four U.S. Coast Artillery Corps regiments guarded the entrance to Manila Bay, including Corregidor Island. Across a narrow three-kilometer strait of water from Matan on Corregidor was Fort Mills, defended by batteries of the 59th and 60th Coast Artillery Regiments, and the 91st and 92nd Coast Artillery Regiments of the harbor defenses of Manila and Subic Bays. The 59th CA acted as a supervisory unit for the batteries of all units positioned on Forts Hughes, Drum, Frank, and Wint. The majority of the forts had been built circa 1910 to 1915 and, except for Fort Drum and Battery Monha on Corregidor, were unprotected against air and high-angle artillery attack except by camouflage. The use of aviation arm was the Far East Air Force of the U.S. Army Air Forces, commanded by Major General Louis H. Brereton. Previously the Philippine Department Air Force and Air Force Yusuf, the Air Force was activated on November 16, 1941 and was the largest ASAF combat air organization outside the United States. Its primary combat power in December 1941 consisted of 91 serviceable P-40 Warhawk fighters and 34 B-17 Flying Fortress bombers, with further modern aircraft en route. Tactically the FIF was part of the reserve force, so that it fell under MacArthur's direct command. As of November 30, 1941, the strength of U.S. Army troops in the Philippines, including Philippine units, was 31,095, consisting of 2,504 officers and 28,591 enlisted. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 3 Mobilization MacArthur's mobilization plans called for induction of the 10 reserve divisions between September 1 and December 15, 1941. The timetable was met on September 1 with the induction of one regiment per division, but slowed as a lack of facilities and equipment hampered training. The second regiments of the divisions were not called up until November 1, and the third regiments were not organized until after hostilities began. 
Training was also seriously inhibited by language difficulties between the American cadres and the Filipino troops, and by the many differing dialects of the numerous ethnic groups comprising the army. By the outbreak of war, only two-thirds of the army had been mobilized, but additions to the force continued with the induction of the constabulary and a portion of the regular army, until a force of approximately 130,000 men was reached. The most crucial equipment shortfalls were in rifles and divisional light artillery. MacArthur requested 84,500 M1 Garand rifles to replace the World War I M1917 Enfields equipping the PA, of which there were adequate numbers, but the War Department denied the request because of production difficulties. The divisions had only 20% of their artillery requirements, and while plans had been approved, to significantly reduce this gap, the arrangements came too late to be implemented before war isolated the Philippines. By contrast, the Philippine division was adequately manned, equipped, and trained. MacArthur received immediate approval to modernize it by reorganizing it as a mobile triangular division. Increasing the authorized size of the Philippine scouts was not politically viable, so MacArthur's plan also provided for freeing up Philippine scouts to round out other units. The transfer of the American 34th Infantry from the 8th Infantry Division in the United States to the Philippine Division, accompanied by two field artillery battalions to create a pair of complete regimental combat teams, was actually underway when war broke out. The deployment ended with the troops still in the United States, where they were sent to defend Hawaii instead. Chapter 1 Section 2 Subsection 4 Other Defense Forces The United States Asiatic Fleet and 16th Naval District, based at Manila, provided the naval defenses for the Philippines. Commanded by Admiral Thomas C. Hart, the surface combatants of the Asiatic Fleet were the heavy cruiser USS Houston, the light cruiser USS Marblehead, and 13 World War I-era destroyers. Its primary striking power lay in the 23 modern submarines assigned to the Asiatic Fleet. Submarine Squadron 2 consisted of six Salmon-class submarines, and Subron 5 of 11 Porpoise and Sargo-class submarines. In September 1941, Naval patrol forces in the Philippines were augmented by the arrival of the six PT boats of Motor Torpedo Boat Squadron 3. Likewise, the China Yangtze patrol gunboats also became part of the Philippine naval defenses, USS Asheville, USS Mindanao, USS Luzon, USS Oahu, and USS Quail. In December 1941, the naval forces were augmented by the schooner USS Lonikai. The U.S. 4th Marine Regiment, stationed in Shanghai, China, since the late 1920s, had anticipated a withdrawal from China during the summer of 1941. As personnel were routinely transferred back to the United States or separated from the service, the regimental commander, Colonel Samuel L. Howard, arranged unofficially for all replacements to be placed in the 1st Special Defense Battalion, based at Cavite. When the 4th Marines arrived in the Philippines on November 30, 1941, it incorporated the Marines at Cavite and Olongapa naval stations into its understrength ranks. An initial plan to divide the 4th into two regiments, mixing each with a battalion of Philippine constabulary, was discarded after Howard showed reluctance, and the 4th was stationed on Corregidor to augment the defenses there, with details detached to Bataan to protect use of headquarters. Additionally the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey, a paramilitary survey force, operated in Manila with the ship USC and GSS Research. Chapter 2, Far East Air Force Controversy News reached the Philippines that an attack on Pearl Harbor was in progress at 2.20 a.m., local time on December 8, 1941. Thief interceptors had already conducted an air search for incoming aircraft reported shortly after midnight, but these had been Japanese scout planes reporting weather conditions. At 3.30 a.m., Brigadier General Richard Sutherland, Chief of Staff to General Douglas MacArthur, heard about the attack from a commercial radio broadcast. At 5 a.m. Thief Commander General Brereton reported to use of headquarters where he attempted to see MacArthur without success. He recommended to MacArthur's Chief of Staff, Brigadier General Richard Sutherland, 
that FIF launch bombing missions against Formosa in accordance with Rainbow Five war plan directives from which an attack was likely to come. Breteran was further made aware of an attack against the USS William B. Preston at Davao Bay. Authorization was withheld, but shortly afterward, in response to a telegram from General George C. Marshall instructing MacArthur to implement Rainbow Five, Brereton was ordered to have a strike in readiness for later approval. Through a series of disputed discussions and decisions, authorization for the first raid was not approved until 10.15 a.m. local time for an attack just before sunset, with a follow-up raid at dawn the next day. In the meantime, Japanese plans to attack Clark and Iber fields using land-based naval bombers and Zero fighters were delayed six hours by fog at its Formosa bases, so that only a small-scale Japanese army mission attacked targets in the northern tip of Luzon. At 8 a.m., Brereton received a phone call from General Henry H. Arnold warning him not to allow his aircraft to be attacked while still on the ground. FIF launched three squadron-sized fighter patrols and all of its serviceable bombers on Luzon between 8 o'clock and 8.30 a.m. as a precautionary move. After MacArthur gave Brereton the authorization he sought at 10.15 a.m., the bombers were ordered to land and prepare for the afternoon raid on Formosa. All three pursuit squadrons began to run short on fuel and broke off their patrols at the same time. The 20th Pursuit Squadron's Curtis P-40B interceptors patrolled the area while the bombers landed at Clark Field between 10.30 and 10.45, then dispersed to their evacuements for servicing. The 17th Pursuit Squadron, based at Nichols Field, also landed at Clark and had its aircraft refueled while its pilots ate lunch, then put its pilots on alert shortly after 11 o'clock. All but two of the Clark, Field B-17s were on the ground. At 11.27 a.m. and 11.29 a.m., the radar post at Iber Field detected two incoming raids while the closest was still 130 miles out. It alerted FIF headquarters and the command post at Clark Field, a warning that reached only the pursuit group commander, Major Orin L. Grover, who apparently became confused by multiple and conflicting reports. The 3rd Pursuit Squadron took off from Iber at 11.45 with instructions to intercept the Western Force, which was thought to have Manila as its target, but dust problems during its takeoff resulted in the fragmentation of its flights. Two flights of the 21st Pursuit Squadron at Nichols Field, 6 P-40S, took off at 11.45, led by 1st Lieutenant William Dias. They started for Clark but were diverted to Manila Bay as a second line of defense if the 3rd PS failed to intercept its force. The 21st's third flight, taking off five minutes later, headed toward Clark, although engine problems with its brand new P-40S reduced its numbers by two. The 17th Pursuit Squadron took off at 12.15 p.m. from Clark, ordered to patrol Bataan and Manila Bay while the 34th PS at Del Carmen never received its orders to protect Clark Field and did not launch. The 20th PS, dispersed at Clark, was ready to take off but did not receive orders from group headquarters. Instead a line chief saw the incoming formation of Japanese bombers and the section commander, 1st Lieutenant Joseph H. Moore, ordered the scramble himself. Even though tracked by radar and with three U.S. pursuit squadrons in the air, when Japanese bombers of the 11th Kokakantai attacked Clark Field at 12.40 p.m., they achieved tactical surprise. Two squadrons of B-17s were dispersed on the ground. Most of the P-40s of the 20th PS were preparing to taxi and were struck by the first wave of 27 Japanese twin-engine Mitsubishi Gemnel bombers, only four of the 20th PS P-40BS managed to take off as the bombs were falling. A second bomber attack followed closely, then escorting Zero fighters strafed the field for 30 minutes, destroying 12 of the 17 American heavy bombers present and seriously damaging three others. Two damaged B-17s were made flyable and taken to Mindanao, where one was destroyed in a ground collision. A near simultaneous attack on the auxiliary field at Iber to the northwest by 54 Betty bombers was also successful, all but four of the 3rd Pursuit Squadron's P-40s, short on fuel and caught in their landing pattern were destroyed in combat or by lack of fuel. Twelve P-40s from the 20th, 21st, and 3rd squadrons attacked the strafers but with little success, 
losing at least four of their own. The Far East Air Force lost half its planes in the 45-minute attack, and was all but destroyed over the next few days, including a number of the surviving B-17s lost to take-off crashes of other planes. The 24th Pursuit Group flew its last interception on December 10, losing 11 of the 40 or so P-40s it sent up, and the surviving P-35s of the 34th PS were destroyed on the ground at Del Carmen. That night FIF combat strength had been reduced to 12 operable B-17s, 22 P-40s, and 8 P-35s. Fighter strength fluctuated daily until December 24, when Yusuf ordered all its forces into Bataan. Until then P-40s and P-35s were cobbled together from spare parts taken from wrecked airplanes, and still crated P-40s were assembled at the Philippine Air Depot. Clark Field was abandoned as a bomber field on December 11 after being used as a staging base for a handful of B-17 missions. Between December 17 and 20, the 14 surviving B-17s were withdrawn to Australia. Every other aircraft of the FIF was destroyed or captured. No formal investigation took place regarding this failure as it occurred in the aftermath of Pearl Harbor. After the war, Brereton and Sutherland in effect blamed each other for FIF being surprised on the ground, and MacArthur released a statement that he had no knowledge of any recommendation to attack Formosa with B-17s. Walter D. Edmonds summarized the disaster, in the Philippines the personnel of our armed forces almost without exception failed to assess accurately the weight, speed, and efficiency of the Japanese Air Force. He quoted Major General Emmett O'Donnell Jr., then a major in charge of the B-17s sent to Mindanao, as concluding that the first day was a disorganized business and that no one was really at fault because no one was geared for war. Chapter 3 – Invasion Chapter 3 – Section 1 – Initial Landings The 14th Army began its invasion with a landing on Batan Island, 120 miles off the north coast of Luzon, on December 8, 1941, by selected naval infantry units. Landings on Camigan Island and at Vigan, Apari, and Gonzaga in northern Luzon followed two days later. Two B-17s attacked the Japanese ships offloading at Gonzaga. Other B-17s with fighter escort attacked the landings at Vigan. In this last coordinated action of the Far East Air Force, U.S. planes damaged two Japanese transports, the cruiser Naka, and the destroyer Murasame, and sank minesweeper W-10. Early on the morning of December 12, the Japanese landed 2,500 men of the 16th Division at Legaspi on southern Luzon, 150 miles from the nearest American and Philippine forces. The attack on Mindanao followed on December 19, using elements of the 16th Army temporarily attached to the invasion force to permit the 14th Army to use all its troops on Luzon. Meanwhile, Admiral Thomas C. Hart withdrew most of his U.S. Asiatic fleet from Philippine waters following Japanese airstrikes that inflicted heavy damage on U.S. naval facilities at Cavite on December 10. Only submarines were left to contest Japanese naval superiority, and the commanders of these, conditioned by pre-war doctrine that held the fleet submarine to be a scouting vessel more vulnerable to air and anti-submarine attack than it actually was, proved unequal to the task. In a book A Different Kind of Victory, a biography of Admiral Thomas C. Hart, James Leutzer wrote. He had 27 subs, submerged in Manila Bay. It was Washington, not the Asiatic fleet commander that directed the fleet to withdraw from Manila. Hart was directed by Washington to send U.S. Navy surface forces and submarines southeast, toward Australia. Douglas MacArthur and Henry Stimson feuding with Admiral Hart over lack of U.S. Navy submarine action. MacArthur asked Admiral Hart, what in the world is the matter with your submarines? MacArthur complained that Hart's inactivity allowed Japan's Navy freedom of action. According to Stimson, MacArthur felt that Hart's ships and submarines were ineffectual, but because Admiral Hart had lost his courage. Admiral Hart's reaction to MacArthur's brickbats, he is inclined to cut my throat and perhaps the Navy in general. Chapter 3 Section 2, Main Attack 
The main attack began early on the morning of December 22 as 43,110 men of the 48th Division and one regiment of the 16th Division, supported by artillery and approximately 90 tanks, landed at three points along the east coast of Lingayen Gulf. A few B-17s flying from Australia attacked the invasion fleet, and US submarines harassed it from the adjacent waters, but to little effect. General Wainwright's poorly trained and equipped 11th Division and 71st Division could neither repel the landings nor pin the enemy on the beaches. The remaining Japanese units of the divisions landed farther south along the Gulf. The 26th Cavalry of the well-trained and better-equipped Philippine scouts, advancing to meet them, put up a strong fight at Rosario, but was forced to withdraw after taking heavy casualties with no hope of sufficient reinforcements. By nightfall, December 23, the Japanese had moved 10 miles into the interior. The next day, 7,000 men of the 16th Division hit the beaches at three locations along the shore of Lumon Bay in southern Luzon, where they found General Parker's forces dispersed, and without artillery protecting the eastern coast, unable to offer serious resistance. They immediately consolidated their positions and began the drive north toward Manila where they would link up with the forces advancing south toward the capital for the final victory. Chapter 3 Section 3 – Withdrawal into Bataan The U.S. Philippine Division moved into the field in reaction to reports of airborne drops near Clark Field, and when this proved false, were deployed to cover the withdrawal of troops into Bataan and to resist Japanese advances in the Subic Bay area. On December 24, MacArthur invoked the pre-war plan WPO3, which called for use of five delaying positions in central Luzon while forces withdrew into Bataan. This was carried out in part by the 26th Cavalry Regiment. He relieved General Parker of his command of South Luzon force and had him begin preparing defensive positions on Bataan, using units as they arrived, both the military headquarters, and the Philippines government were moved there. Nine days of feverish movement of supplies into Bataan, primarily by barge from Manila, began in an attempt to feed an anticipated force of 43,000 troops for six months. Nevertheless, substantial forces remained in other areas for several months. On December 26, Manila was declared an open city by MacArthur. However, the United States military was still using the city for logistical purposes while the city was declared open, and the Japanese army ignored the declaration and bombed the city. Units of both defense forces were maneuvered to hold open the escape routes into Bataan, in particular San Fernando, the steel bridges at Columpit over the deep, Pampanga River at the north end of Manila Bay, and Plaridel north of Manila. The South Luzon Force, despite its inexperience and equivocating orders to withdraw and hold, successfully executed leapfrogging retrograde techniques and crossed the bridges by January 1. Japanese air commanders rejected appeals by the 48th Division to bomb the bridges to trap the retreating forces, which were subsequently demolished by Philippine scout engineers on January 1. The Japanese realized the full extent of MacArthur's plan on December 30 and ordered the 48th Division to press forward and seal off Bataan. In a series of actions between January 2 and 4, the 11th and 21st Divisions of the Philippine Army, the 26th Cavalry and the American M3 Stuart tanks of the Provisional Tank Group held open the road from San Fernando to Dinolopihon at the neck of the peninsula for the retreating forces of the South Luzon Force then made good their own escape. Despite 50% losses in the 194th Tank Battalion during the retreat, the Stuarts and a supporting battery of 75mm SBM half-tracks repeatedly stopped Japanese thrusts and were the final units to enter Bataan. On December 30, the American 31st Infantry moved to the vicinity of Dalton Pass to cover the flanks of troops withdrawing from central and southern Luzon, while other units of the Philippine Division organized positions at Bataan. The 31st Infantry then moved to a defensive position on the west side of the Olongapa Manila Road, near Layek Junction, at the neck of Bataan Peninsula, on January 5, 1942. The junction was given up on January 6, but the withdrawal to Bataan was successful. Chapter 4 Battle of Bataan From January 7 to 14, 
1942, the Japanese concentrated on reconnaissance and preparations for an attack on the main battle line from Abuke to Mount Natib to Morbon. At the same time, in a critical mistake, they also relieved the 48th Division, responsible for much of the success of Japanese operations, with the much less capable 65th Brigade, intended as a garrison force. The Japanese 5th Air Group was withdrawn from operations on January 5 in preparation for movement with the 48th Division to the Netherlands East Indies. U.S. and Filipino forces repelled night attacks near Abuque, and elements of the U.S. Philippine Division counterattacked on January 16. This failed, and the division withdrew to the reserve battle line from Casa Pillar to Bagak in the center of the peninsula on January 26. The 14th Army renewed its attacks on January 23 with an attempted amphibious landing behind the lines by a battalion of the 16th Division, then with general attacks beginning January 27 along the battle line. The amphibious landing was disrupted by a PT boat and contained in brutally dense jungle by ad hoc units made up of U.S. Army Air Corps troops, naval personnel, and Philippine constabulary. The pocket was then slowly forced back to the cliffs, with high casualties on both sides. Landings to reinforce the surviving pocket on January 26 and February 2 were severely disrupted by air attacks from the few remaining FIF P-40s, then trapped and eventually annihilated on February 13. A penetration in the I-Core line was stopped and broken up into several pockets. General Homer on February 8 ordered the suspension of offensive operations in order to reorganize his forces. This could not be carried out immediately, because the 16th Division remained engaged, trying to extricate a pocketed battalion of its 20th Infantry. With further losses, the remnants of the battalion, 378 officers and men, were extricated on February 15. On February 22, the 14th Army Line withdrew a few miles to the north and use of forces reoccupied the abandoned positions. The result of the Battle of the Points and Battle of the Pockets was total destruction of all three battalions of the Japanese 20th Infantry and a clear use of victory. For several weeks, the Japanese, deterred by heavy losses and reduced to a single brigade, conducted siege operations while waiting refitting and reinforcement. Both armies engaged in patrols and limited local attacks. Because of the worsening Allied position in the Asia-Pacific region, U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt ordered MacArthur to relocate to Australia, as Supreme Allied Commander South West Pacific Area. MacArthur's famous speech regarding the Philippines, in which he said I came out of Bataan and I shall return was made at Tarawi. South Australia on March 20, Wainwright officially assumed control of what was now termed United States forces in the Philippines on March 23. During this period, elements of the U.S. Philippine Division were shifted to assist in the defense of other sectors. Beginning March 28, a new wave of Japanese air and artillery attacks hit Allied forces who were severely weakened by malnutrition, sickness and prolonged fighting. On April 3, the Japanese began to break through along Mount Summit, estimating that the offensive would require a month to end the campaign. The U.S. Philippine Division, no longer operating as a coordinated unit, and exhausted by five days of nearly continuous combat, was unable to counterattack effectively against heavy Japanese assaults. On April 8, the U.S. 57th Infantry Regiment, and the 31st Division were overrun near the Alangan River. The U.S. 45th Infantry Regiment, under orders to reach Mari Veles and evacuate to Corregidor, finally surrendered on April 10, 1942. Only 300 men of the U.S. 31st Infantry successfully reached Corregidor. Chapter 5, Battle of Corregidor Corregidor was a U.S. Army Coast Artillery Corps position defending the entrance to Manila Bay, part of the harbor defenses of Manila and Subic Bays. It was armed by both older seacoast, disappearing gun batteries of the 59th and 91st Coast Artillery Regiments, an offshore mine field of approximately 35 groups of controlled mines, and an anti-aircraft unit, the 60th CA. The latter was posted on the higher elevations of Corregidor and was able to respond successfully to the Japanese air attacks, downing many fighters and bombers. 
the older stationary batteries with fixed mortars and immense cannons, for defense from attack by sea, were easily put out of commission by Japanese bombers. The American soldiers and Filipino scouts defended the small fortress until they had little left to wage a defense. Early in 1942, the Japanese Air Command installed oxygen in its bombers to fly higher than the range of the Corregidor anti-aircraft batteries, and after that time, heavier bombardment began. In December 1941, Philippines President Manuel L. Quezon, General MacArthur, other high-ranking military officers and diplomats and families escaped the bombardment of Manila, and were housed in Corregidor's Malinta Tunnel. Prior to their arrival, Malinta's laterals had served as high command headquarters, hospital and storage of food and arms. In March 1942, several U.S. Navy submarines arrived on the north side of Corregidor. The Navy brought in mail, orders, and weaponry. They took away with them the high American and Filipino government officers, gold and silver and other important records. Those who were unable to escape by submarine were eventually military powers of Japan or placed in civilian concentration camps in Manila and other locations. Corregidor was defended by 11,000 personnel, comprising the units mentioned above that were stationed on Corregidor, the U.S. 4th Marine Regiment, and U.S. Navy personnel deployed as infantry. Some were able to get to Corregidor from the Bataan Peninsula when the Japanese overwhelmed the units there. The Japanese began their final assault on Corregidor with an artillery barrage on May 1. On the night of May 5 the 6, two battalions of the Japanese 61st Infantry Regiment landed at the northeast end of the island. Despite strong resistance, the Japanese established a beachhead that was soon reinforced by tanks and artillery. The defenders were quickly pushed back toward the stronghold of Malinta Hill. Late on May 6, Wainwright asked Homer for terms of surrender. Homer insisted that surrender include all allied forces in the Philippines. Believing that the lives of all those on Corregidor would be endangered, Wainwright accepted. On May 8, he sent a message to Sharp, ordering him to surrender the Visayan Mindanao force. Sharp complied, but many individuals carried on the fight as guerrillas. Few unit commanders were so hard pressed as to be forced to surrender and none had any desire to surrender. Sharp's decision to surrender involved many factors. Major Larry S. Schmidt, in a 1982 master's degree thesis, said Sharp's decision was based on two reasons, that the Japanese were capable of executing the 10,000 survivors of Corregidor, and that Sharp now knew his forces would not be reinforced by the United States, as had been previously thought. Chapter 5 Section 1, List of U.S. Generals Who Became Prisoners of War 17 United States Army generals rendered to Japanese forces by May 1942. Lieutenant General Jonathan M. Wainwright, Commanding General, United States Forces in the Philippines. Major General Albert M. Jones, Commanding General, Philippine I Corps. Major General Edward P. King, Commanding General, Northern Luzon. Major General George F. Moore, Commanding General, Harbor Defenses of Manila and Subic Bays slash Philippine Coast Artillery. Major General George M. Parker, Commanding General, Southern Luzon slash Philippine II Corps. Major General William F. Sharp, Commanding General, Visayan Mindanao Force Philippines. Brigadier General Louis C. Beebe, Chief of Staff to Lieutenant General Jonathan M. Wainwright. Brigadier General Clifford Blummel, Commanding General, 31st Division. Brigadier General William E. Brower, Commanding General, 11th Division. Brigadier General Bradford G. Chinoeth, Commanding General, 61st Division. Brigadier General Charles C. Drake, Commanding General, Quartermaster Corps in the Philippines. Brigadier General Arnold J. Funk, Chief of Staff to Major General Edward P. King. Brigadier General Maxon S. Locke, Commanding General, Philippine Division. Brigadier General Alan C. McBride, 
Deputy Chief of Staff to General Douglas MacArthur and Commanding General of the Service Command Area. Brigadier General Clinton A. Pierce, Commanding General, 26th Cavalry Regiment. Brigadier General Joseph P. Vachon, Commanding General, 101st Division. Brigadier General James R. N. Weaver, Commanding General, 1st Provisional Tank Group. Chapter 6, Aftermath The defeat was the beginning of three and a half years of harsh treatment for the Allied survivors, including atrocities like the Bataan Death March and the misery of Japanese prison camps, and the hell ships on which American and Allied men were sent to Japan to be used as slave labor in mines and factories. Thousands were crowded into the holds of Japanese ships without water, food, or sufficient ventilation. The Japanese did not mark POW on the decks of these vessels, and some were attacked and sunk by Allied aircraft and submarines. For example, on September 7, 1944 SS Shiny Omaru was sunk by USS Paddle with losses of 668 POWs, only 82 POWs survived. Although the campaign was a victory to the Japanese, it took longer than anticipated to defeat the Filipinos and Americans. This required forces that would have been used to attack Borneo and Java to be diverted to the battle in the Philippines, and also slowed the advance on New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. During the occupation of the Philippines, Americans and Filipino guerrillas fought against the occupying forces. The Allied and Philippine Commonwealth forces began the campaign to recapture the Philippines in 1944, with landings on the island of Leyte. On January 29, 1945, U.S. and Philippine forces liberated POWs in the raid at Cabanatuan. Chapter 6, Section 1, Importance The defense of the Philippines was the longest resistance to the Japanese Imperial Army in the initial stages of World War II. After the Battle of Abuke the Japanese started to withdraw from Matan, and resumed their attack in April, allowing MacArthur 40 days to prepare Australia as an operational base, the initial resistance in the Philippines allowed Australia crucial time to organize for its defense. Philippine-American resistance against the Japanese up to the fall of Bataan on April 9, 1942, lasted 105 days. Chapter 7, Use of Order of Battle December 3, 1941, Casualty Reports Chapter 7 Section 1, United States Army Forces Far East Philippine Constabulary 1st PC Regiment 2nd PC Regiment 3rd PC Regiment ABMC lists 3 dead 4th PC Regiment HQ Philippine Department Headquarters Harbor Defenses of Manila and Subic Bays. Philippine Division, PS Philippine Scouts. As of July 31, 1941 Division numbered 10,743 Post Service Command, PS. ABMC lists 175 dead. 1st Philippine Coast Artillery. ABMC lists 1 dead. 12th Medical Battalion, PS. ABMC lists 121 dead. 12th Medical Regiment, PS. ABMC lists 13 dead. 12th Military Police Company, PS. ABMC lists 40 dead. 12th Ordnance Company, PS. ABMC lists 45 dead. 12th Quartermaster Battalion HQ, PS. ABMC lists 3 dead. 12th Quartermaster Battalion, PS. ABMC lists 70 dead. 12th Quartermaster Regiment. ABMC lists 90 dead. 12th Signal Company, PS. ABMC lists 77 dead. 14th Engineer Regiment, PS. ABMC lists 324 dead. 14th Engineer Battalion, PS. ABMC lists 4 dead. 17th Ordnance Company, U.S. Army. ABMC lists 45 dead. 23rd Field Artillery, 
Tree, A. ADMC lists 159 dead plus 1 dead, 1st Battalion 24th Field Artillery, P.S. ADMC lists 309 dead. 26th Cavalry Regiment. ADMC lists 301 dead. 31st Infantry, U.S. Army. ADMC lists 936 dead. 43rd Infantry. ADMC lists 31 dead. 45th Infantry. ADMC lists 1039 dead. 47th Infantry. ADMC lists 1 dead. 47th Motor Transport Company. ADMC lists 1 dead. 57th Infantry. ADMC lists 983 dead. 59th Coast Artillery, U.S. Army. Corregidor, ADMC lists 329 dead plus 1, Colonel Paul Bunker 60th Coast Artillery. Corregidor, ADMC lists 390 dead. 71st Medical Battalion. ADMC lists 0 dead. 74th Quartermaster Bakery Company. ADMC lists 17 dead. 75th Ordnance Depot Company, U.S. Army. ADMC lists 3 dead. 75th Ordnance Company, U.S. Army. ADMC lists 35 dead. 86th Field Artillery. ADMC lists 169 total. 88th Field Artillery, P.S. ADMC lists 186 dead. 91st Coast Artillery, P.S. ADMC lists 202 dead. 92nd Coast Artillery, P.S. Corregidor, ADMC lists 200 dead. 200th Coast Artillery, U.S. Army, ABMC lists 373 dead. 202nd Philippine Engineer Battalion, U.S. Army. ABMC lists 9 dead. 252nd Signal Construction Company, P.S. ABMC lists 44 dead. 515th Coast Artillery Regiment. U.S. Army, ABMC lists 207 dead. 808th MP Company, U.S. Army, dash ABMC lists 90 dead. Provisional Tank Group, under the command of B.G. James Weaver.17 TH Ordnance Battalion ABMC lists 45 dead. 192nd Tank Battalion, ABMC lists 189 dead plus HQ Company 192nd Tank Battalion ABMC lists 2 dead. Note 192nd Tank Battalion Article Reports 328 did not survive the war 194th Tank Battalion. ABMC lists 183 dead. Far East Air Force commanded by Major General Lewis H. Brereton, also commanded by Brig General Harold Houston George, killed in flying accident Australia April 30, 1942 Fifth Air Base Group. V. Bomber Command. 19th Bomb Group ABMC lists 3 dead, HQ Squadron 19th BG ABMC list 103 dead. 14th Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 13 dead. 28th Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 93 dead. 30th Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 110 dead. 93rd Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 116 dead. 440th Ordnance Squadron ABMC lists 68 dead. 27th Bomb Group Headquarters ABMC lists 3 dead. 2nd Observation Squadron ABMC lists 71 dead. 16th Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 72 dead. 17th Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 62 dead. 91st Bomb Squadron ABMC lists 76 dead. 48th Material Squadron ABMC lists 53 dead plus 19 also listed dead when the 48th Squadron was part of the Air Base Group. 
454th Ordnance Squadron ABMC lists 71 dead note, ground echelon of the 27th Bomb Group at Bataan Fort as 2nd Battalion Provisional Infantry Regiment. V Interceptor Command. 19th Air Base Group ABMC List 1 died. 20th Air Base Group ABMC List 1 dead. Tow Target Detachment. 5th Communications Detachment. ABMC lists 0 dead. 5th Weather Detachment ABMC lists 0 dead. Chemical Warfare Debt. 4th Chemical Company. ABMC lists 33 dead. 5th Chemical Detachment ABMC lists 2 dead. 19th Air Base Squadron. ABMC lists 79 dead. 27th Material Squadron. ABMC lists 75 dead. 28th Material Squadron. ABMC lists 92 dead. 47th Material Squadron. 803D Engineering Detachment. ABMC lists 232 dead. 809th Engineering Detachment. 409th Signal Slash Communications Detachment ABMC lists 29 dead. 429th Maintenance Detachment. 24th Pursuit Group. Colonel Orrin L. Grover. HQ Squadron ABMC lists 112 dead. 3rd Pursuit Squadron ABMC lists 0 dead. 17th Pursuit Squadron ABMC lists 0 dead. 20th Pursuit Squadron ABMC lists 96 dead. 35th Pursuit Group ABMC lists 5 dead. 21st Pursuit Squadron ABMC lists 89 dead. 34th Pursuit Squadron ABMC lists 0 dead. Philippine Aircraft Warning Detachment. 6th Pursuit Squadron, Philippine Army Air Corps ABMC lists 1 dead. Chapter 7 Section 2, Philippine Army. HQ Philippine Army. 11th Division. HQ 11th Division, ABMC lists 1 dead. HQ COM 11th Division, ABMC lists 1 dead. 11th Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 11th Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 12th Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 2 dead. 13th Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 21st Division. 21st Engineer Battalion, ABMC lists 2 dead. 21st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 3 dead. 21st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 3 dead. 22nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 3 dead. 31st Division. 31st Engineer Battalion, ABMC lists 1 dead. 31st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 2 dead. 31st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 6 dead. 32nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 3 dead. 41st Division, Commanding General Vicente Lim, ABMC listed dead 41st Engineer Battalion, ABMC lists 1 dead. 41st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 6 dead. 42nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 51st Division. 51st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 51st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 52nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 53rd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 61st Division. HQ 61st Division, ABMC lists 1 dead. 61st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 61st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 
62nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 4 dead. 63rd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 71st Division. 71st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 71st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 2 dead. 72nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 6 dead. 73rd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 3 dead. 75th Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 71st Quartermaster Company, ABMC lists 1 dead. 81st Division Brigadier General Guy O. Fort, Kia 81st Division, ABMC lists 5 dead. 81st Engineer Bat, ABMC lists 1 dead. 81st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 2 dead. 82nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 2 dead. 83rd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 91st Division. HU 91st Division, ABMC lists 1 dead. 91st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 5 dead. 91st Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 2 dead. 92nd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 5 dead. 93rd Infantry Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 101st Division. ABMC lists 1 with Division. 101st Engineer Battalion, ABMC lists 1 dead. 101st Field Artillery Regiment, ABMC lists 1 dead. 101st Inf Regiment, ABMC lists 7 dead. 102nd Inf Regiment, ABMC lists 0 dead. 103rd Inf Regiment, ABMC lists 3 dead harbor defenses of Manila and Subic Bays, for strength in November 1941 c. Note, Harbor defenses included units listed above. HQ and HQ Battery. 59th Coast Artillery, see above for casualty listings. 60th Coast Artillery, see above for casualty listings. 91st Coast Artillery, PS, see above for casualty listings. 92nd Coast Artillery, PS, see above for casualty listings. Uzamp Harrison. Station Hospital. Chemical Warfare Debt. Chapter 7 Section 3, United States Navy. Admiral Thomas C. Hart United States Asiatic Fleet and 16th Naval District. One heavy cruiser USS Houston for fate see below. Two light cruisers. USS Boise. USS Marblehead. 13 destroyers. Destroyer Squadron 29 Captain Herbert V. Wiley. USS Black Hawk. USS Paul Jones. Destroyer Division 50 Commander P.H. Talbot. USS John D. Ford. USS Peary. USS Pillsbury. USS Pope. Destroyer Division 57 Commander E.M. Crouch. USS Alden. USS Edsel. USS John D. Edwards. USS Whipple. Destroyer Division 58 Commander Thomas H. Binford. USS Barker. USS Bulmer. USS Parrot. USS Stewart. USS Whip, Poor Will. U.S. Submarines at Manila slash Mari Veles Naval Section Base, Cavite, Philippines, consisted of Submarine Squadron 2 consisted of 12 Salmon Class Submarines and Submarine Squadron 5 of 11 Porpoise and Sargo Class Submarines Submarine Squadron 21 of 4 Porpoise and Sargo Class Submarines plus Submarine Tender USS Holland USS Perch USS Permit USS Pickerel USS Pike USS Porpoise USS S-36 
USS S-37 USS S-38 USS S-39 USS S-40 USS S-41 USS Salmon USS Sargo USS Sorry USS Sculpin USS Sea Dragon USS Seal USS Sea Lion USS Sea Raven USS Sea Wolf USS Shark USS Snapper USS Spearfish USS Stingray USS Sturgeon USS Swordfish USS Tarpon PT Boat Squadron 3 for Fate Sea Below China Yangtze Patrol, Rear Admiral William A. Glassford, for Fate Sea Below 5 out of 6 ships lost USS Tulsa Patrol Wing 10, Captain Frank D. Wagner, Cavite Naval Base, Luzon, Philippines VP 101 VP 102 USS Childs USS William B. Preston USS Heron In December 1941, naval forces were augmented by the following. Schooner USS Lonikai Station cast U.S. Navy code breaking on the Japanese military, evacuated to Australia 1942. Navy losses Cruiser USS Houston PT Boat Motor Torpedo Boat Squadron 3 Six Pints Boats All Lost December 6, 1941, March 1942 USS Bitten Scuttle December 10, 1941 USS Edsel Escaped to Australia, sunk March 1, 1942 USS Canopus Scuttled April 10, 1942 548 crew served with 4th Marine Regiment, 212 Kia slash MIA USS Genesee scuttled May 5, 1942 but salvaged by the Japanese, sunk on November 5, 1944. USS Finch ran out of fuel and abandoned March, sunk by Japanese on April 9, 1942, salvaged as IJN Patrol Boat 103, sunk in 1945. USS Langley escaped to Dutch East Indies and Australia, lost May 8, 1942. USS New York scuttled December 1941. USC and GSS research beached January 30, 1942. USS Peary escaped to Australia, sunk February 19, 1942. USS Perch escaped to Australia, scuttled March 3, 1942. 6 out of 54 crew did not survive the war USS Pickerel escaped, to Australia, lost with all hands April 3, 1943. USS Pigeon sunk May 4, 1942. USS Pillsbury escaped to Dutch East Indies, sunk March 2, 1942. USS Pope escaped to Dutch East Indies, sunk March 1, 1942. USS Quail scuttled following damage by air and surface attack May 5, 1942. USS S-36 scuttled following grounding January 21, 1942. USS S-39 run aground and abandoned August 13, 1942. USS Sea Lion scuttled December 25, 1941 after damage December 10, 1941, five crewmen lost in war. USS Stewart escaped to Java and scuttled March 2, 1942, salvaged as IJN patrol boat 102, sunk in 1946. In addition to district patrol craft YP-16 and YP-17 and about 70 miscellaneous district craft were lost in the Philippines in 1942. China Yangtze patrol 5 of 6 vessels lost. USS Asheville lost March 3, 1942, 161 crew lost. USS Luzon scuttled May 6, 1942 but salvaged by the Japanese, sunk in the Philippines by USS Narwhal on March 3, 1944. USS Mindanao lost May 2, 1942. USS Oahu sunk May 5, 1942. 
USS Wake, captured December 8, 1941. Chapter 7 Section 4, United States Marine Corps 4th Marine Regiment stationed at Corregidor, consisted of 142 different organizations. USMC, 72 officers, 1,368 enlisted. USN, 37 officers, 848 enlisted. USAC PA, 111 officers, 1,455 enlisted 4th Marines casualties were 315 killed slash 15 MIA slash 357 we are in the Philippine campaign. 105 Marines were captured on Bataan and 1,283 captured on Corregidor of whom 490 didn't survive. Chapter 7 Section 5, Miscellaneous Harbor Defenses April 15, 1942. U.S. Army, 5,012. U.S. Navy, 2,158. USMC, 1,617. Philippine Scouts, 1,298. Philippine Army, 1,818. Philippine Navy, 400. U.S. Civilians, 343. Civilians, 2,082. Army Nurse Corps, Navy Nurse Corps, 78. Chapter 7 Section 6, Books. Barch, William H. The 8th of December 1941, MacArthur's Pearl Harbor. College Station, Texas, USA, Texas A&M University Press. Bellotti, James H., William M. Bellotti. Corregidor, The Saga of a Fortress. Harper and Rowe. Asin B. 006 Bobrick. Burho, Mark A., Terence C. McGovern. American Defenses of Corregidor and Manila Bay 1898-1945. Osprey Publishing Limited ISBN 184176-427-2. Burton, John. Fortnight of Infamy, The Collapse of Allied Air Power West of Pearl Harbor. U.S. Naval Institute Press. ISBN 159114096-X. Connaughton, Richard. MacArthur and Defeat in the Philippines. New York, The Overlook Press. Dreyer, Edward J. In the Service of the Emperor, Essays on the Imperial Japanese Army. Nebraska, University of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0832-1780. Edmonds, Walter D. They Fought with What They Had, The Story of the Army Air Forces in the Southwest Pacific, 1941-1942. College Station, Texas, USA, Little, Brown and Company. ISBN 978-1442142596. Gordon, John? Fighting for MacArthur, the Navy and Marine Corps Desperate Defense of the Philippines. Naval Institute Press. ISBN 978-161251-05-76. Jackson, Charles, Bruce H. Norton. I Am Alive, A United States Marine's Story of Survival in a World War II Japanese POW Camp. Presidio Press. ISBN 0345-44911-8. Maloney, Richard C. Battle for Bataan, an eyewitness account. iBooks. ISBN 0734-7453. Martin, Adrian R. Operation Plum, the ill-fated 27th Bombardment Group and the Fight for the Western Pacific. Texas A. and M. University Press. ISBN 978-160344-0196. Melnick, Stephen Michael. 
Philippine War Diary, 1939-1945. Van Nostrand Reinhold. ISBN 0442-21258-5. Morrison, Samuel Elliott. The Rising Sun in the Pacific 1931, April 1942, Volume 3 of History of United States Naval Operations in World War II. Castle Books. ISBN 0758-1347. Morris, Eric. Corregidor, The American Alamo of World War II. Cooper Square Press. ISBN 0-8154-1085-9. Rotman, Gordon L. Japanese Army in World War II, Conquest of the Pacific 1941-42. Osprey Publishing. ISBN 978-184176-789-5. Schultz, Duane. Hero of Bataan. The Story of General Jonathan M. Wainwright. St. Martin's Press. Asin B. O. 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 Uxj. Waldron, Ben, Emily Burnson. Corregidor, From Paradise to Hell. Trafford Publishing. ISBN 14122109 X. Whitman, John W. Bataan, Our Last Ditch. The Bataan Campaign, 1942. Hippocrene Books. ISBN 0-87,052-877-7. Young, Donald J. The Battle of Bataan, A History of the 90-Day Siege and Eventual Surrender of 75,000 Filipino and United States Troops, to the Japanese in World War. McFarland and Company. ISBN 0-89957-57-3. Zaloga, Stephen J. Japanese Tanks 1939-45. Osprey, 2007. ISBN 978 184603